Hey guys, Eric Ani here from MechanicalHub.com. I'm gonna talk with a very good friend of mine in this video, Jake Bruton. He's the owner of Aero Building out of Columbia, Missouri. We're gonna talk tankless water heaters and heat pumps. It's gonna be a builder and plumber conversation. I hope you enjoy it. Let's go. Jake Bruton, Aero Building, Jake, Jake. Jake and I have done a lot of videos together on the Build Show Network. and. I just love having you on. We're at the show here, and I wanted to get a builder's take and have a conversation about water heating, uh, water heater selection, just thinking about them in the design okay. phase. Uh, so at the Renai booth here is a perfect- It's a good place to have that conversation. I know, it's perfect, it's perfect. So uh, we were talking off air before we started record recording, a little bit just kind of your background, what you guys are building with. Do a lot of heat pumps. You're doing a lot of tank water heaters. Yep. You've done some different technology, split system, heat pump, water heater, stuff like that. Uh, you're even considering a tankless coming up on a job. Yep. Uh, I've done a ton of tankless. And so I have a lot of insight on kind of how to, what to think about ahead of time. But there's things you guys are doing on the pre-construction side when it comes to plumbing, planning, stuff like that. Yep. Uh, I, I think that we think about plumbing kind of the same way that we think about our mechanicals on the HVAC side. Like we're trying to keep our runs as short as we possibly can. Yeah. We're trying to keep things so that our homeowners have access to them as quickly as possible. Like we don't want the air conditioning to run all the way across the house through the attic before it gets to where yeah. it's supposed to be being delivered. The hot water is exactly the same for us. So like we're trying for centrally located mechanical rooms. We're trying to think about comfort. Where you were on a job recently where we had a research situation yep. that was operating specifically off of a motion sensor so that it's only using power and when people are home, things like that. Like we're really trying to plan ahead for optimal comfort because now that we have the house in a really high opportunity for success, we're having more demanding clients. So like that selection process is getting more and more difficult now. Well, so, and I applaud you for making those choices when you're on the planning stage. I can tell you, because I'm working with your customers, you know, in theory, 10, 15 years down the road, right? Because yeah. I do a lot of retrofit stuff. Yeah. And one of the biggest complaints I get from homeowners is waiting for hot water. Yeah. Oftentimes people aren't talking to me about like, hey, how can I lower my operating costs? Uh, as much as they're saying, hey, I'm sick of waiting for hot water. So we could do research systems really easily. That's what's cool about tankless. And I'm not sure really how many builders uh, have been paying attention and really know the ins and outs of tankless and that you can get hot water recirculation built right into them. Yeah. No external pump. You don't even have to do like a motion sensor now, Jake. Yeah. So like this particular unit, this is their Sensi RXP, right? So it's, it's technically this one's the one with this, the recirc. It they is. Look, so they look the same from the outside. They do. So it's a condensing tankless water heater, right? So it can run on propane or natural gas. Um, installs like every other tankless water heater, but these have a pump built in them. And if you have a dedicated recirc line, like if you're on new construction and you've installed that, typically coming from your farthest bathroom back to the water heater, yep. whether you're centrally located or not, uh, you've run that recirc line and we can connect it to this. It's got an internal pump and it, it'll keep that line hot, right? Yep. So we're not waiting for hot water. And, and uh, it's also not gonna always fire the unit. That's another thing people talk about when you talk about tankless. Like, so it's got, it's got a brain of its own? It does, and actually what's really cool is these things will now learn your water usage. And this is something I talk about in my videos all the time. And I think this is something interesting I th think builders should pay attention to. So this that's a savings right there, and I'm gonna explain why. So like that job you, we were working on, I got I got invited down to work on install yeah. the system there, and you had that photo eye, like a motion sensor, right? Yeah. That's what that is, to activate. So every time somebody walked into the kitchen, it would circulate the water. And although I, I think that's great because it's automatic and there's no further input needed from the occupants or your customer, or your client. Yeah. Ultimately, it's overkill because of the pump we ended up buying. Well, and ultimately, you don't have to uh, activate hot water if you're just walking into the kitchen. Like, you might not use hot water, right? And so, 
these systems will learn your not those clients i told them they have to every time they go in the kitchen now because we put that in yeah yeah no but these systems will learn usage you can also get like a button activation yeah you could do a motion sensor you could still do that but these manufacturers like renai have thought about that and said you know what we can make this as easy as possible which in turn lowers the installation cost because we're not having to add more yeah. control don't want anything else and I'll tell you, like I said a minute ago, like honestly, my customers, like they just want hot water now. Of course, they don't want to run out of hot water. And that's why I personally like tankless as a solution, especially a new construction, because if we go into it, we can design the best plumbing system. But if we don't have a water heater that can handle the load, then yeah. you're, you know, you're kind of out of luck. And tankless will almost always do that. And the cool thing about tankless is, is if as your house gets larger and the load gets bigger, we can actually use more than one, you know? Yeah. And they so don't take up a lot of- in series, yep. or they could be at separate ends of the house. Yeah, they could be completely disconnected from each other, or you could manifold them together and have more than one, which is pretty cool. Uh, the Renai product, they, I mean, they make it as easy as you can imagine to do that. But ultimately, yeah, the, the design and like location is great. Recirc is phenomenal like having it built into the unit. You don't have to have that because they sell the same unit, no pump. Yeah. You know, so if you're not going to do a research, like you simply don't need it. Let's say you've got a very small structure and the plumbing is four feet away. Yeah. You don't need to do hot water recirculation. Yeah. So what are some of the things you're talk, thinking talk of? Talk to me about this thing. Okay. So you and I, you're not installing any no. water heaters outside. You're too no. far north. But if you lived a few hours south, maybe 10 hours south, maybe yeah. you stayed away. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. That's stupid. But well, Florida, if, <laughs> if I was you, in South Florida, if you were in Florida, if you were in California, you know, parts of Nevada, Arizona, you can install water heaters outside. So what Renai did was really cool. So this would be interesting for builders too, is you probably get a mix if you're in those Southern climates where you might be installing some of your water heaters on the outside, some of them inside. And they just made this hood that goes on the top and it converts one tankless into either from an indoor to an outdoor yeah. that's it it's just so adding this. these guys are exactly the same they are yeah all this has is this added vent cover and so that thing vents from here rather than pipe and up correct and so these are direct vent appliances so when you're installing them inside we can use room air on the inside but then of course you have to have some kind of makeup yeah but typically how we're installing them and how they're they work best is we use a two pipe system one yep. is an intake pipe one is an exhaust pipe yeah and i know you guys are install. you know like you're building to the highest standards for for air tightness <laughs> thank you but you are you are to the i mean your 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 goal is to have like no air leakage in the building whatsoever yeah. right i um, and we can actually I, it probably makes you a little nervous to say we're going to start drilling holes and exhaust you know for exhaust piping yeah. and things like that but you're talking small diameter piping, yeah. very easy con to control, especially, I mean, it's pretty tough to do that on a retrofit, but especially easy to control the air sealing around those pipes on new construction. You know, so really nothing Certainly. to worry about. These cabinets are sealed. You're not gonna get any kind of leakage. Yeah, they're not drafting or anything like right, that. Right, right. So I, that's probably- Yeah, because there, there's combustion going on inside here. You want, you need it to be sealed anyway. You need it right? to be sealed. The other thing too is these are like nearly silent. So that that gasketed door stuff like that goes a long ways at actually making these uh almost silent well quiet quiet is a really good conversation too when we're talking about if we're not recircing through the whole house and i'm using say two of these one of these is next to the kitchen yep. one of these is next to my master suite and then i have hot water close when I get up in the morning and start taking a shower and somebody else is still in bed, yep. or I have hot water right next to the kitchen and people are over, I don't have to worry about the, the tank or whatever making noise or my heat pump making noise and it being a disruption to what we have going on. The fact that it is quiet, it's sealed, it's sealed combustion yep. and it's piping through PVC that's not gonna be loud and yep. tingy and metal and everything. Like there's all sorts of little advantages that help make it quieter that add up in the long run. It is, you're right about that. They also have, let's show you, I'll show you this here. So I, I alluded to the being a two pipe system. 
but it can be a single pipe. So like, well, this is concentric, we yeah. call it. So you've got your air intake around the outside, and then you've got your exhaust. This is a polypropylene material that's made specifically for gas appliances, okay. for the venting. So it's a real high temperature plastic that's engineered and certified for it. But then your exhaust is in the center. So now that's a roughly four and a half, I think, inch hole. So now we could just drill one hole through the outside and we can use yeah. this type of piping system. So of course it comes at different lengths. There's a termination. Uh, oftentimes we're trying to mount these as close to the outdoor outside walls yeah. we can. We don't have to. We can also go up through the roof. But instead of two pipes, you could use a system this concentric too. That's kind of nice. Uh, I like it, but it is like it is a uh, proprietary material, like venting system. So you're going to be buying it through your Renai dealership, you know, or your distributor. But Not yeah. a big deal. You're buying a water heater from them. No, I know, I know. You know. One of the like, so for me, we're doing a lot of the model with the pump in it. Uh, even in retrofit, what's cool about these, you know, like if you're doing remodeling. Uh, I know you don't do a ton of that. Sometimes you're doing, you know, building onto existing homes. Uh, you're probably addressing hot water at that point in time too, and it might affect the existing structure. These models with the pump built into them, we can adapt to an existing house without a dedicated recirc line. Are you following me yeah. here? So you've just got hot and cold. Like yeah. that's it. There's no recirc already installed. Yeah. And let's face it, like adding that to most existing houses is going to be cost prohibitive yeah right we're not cutting that much open no i mean it, if you're lucky you have a basement to work in and maybe it's unfinished then maybe you can add a dedicated line but we don't have to with these because we just use what we call a little crossover t it's very uh it's a little thermostatic kind of valve that goes in between the hot and cold at that far sink yeah and then this pump will actually just push warm water to that unit and push it a little bit a uh, little bit of warm water into that cold side underneath yeah. that sink so shut off valve to shut off valve, it just relays over. It's just bridging, yeah. It's like, we call it a crossover or a bridging T, and it's a really neat, you know, fully code compliant thing. Yeah. Just put a little warm water into that far sink, and usually you're talking like a bathroom sink, right? So like, yeah. it doesn't matter if the water doesn't come out ice cold, you know, it has yeah. a little bit warm water. It's no I have deal. one in my house. It's a, it's a cool, yeah, it's, yeah, you do have one. Yeah. And it's a really cool way to get hot water to that far reaches without any real extra expenses, you know? Okay, did we cover tankless? Can we talk about the other thing that we use quite a bit on our jobs? I do wanna talk about that, let's go see it. Hi. All right, Jake, so heat pump water heaters. Uh, you're pretty familiar, you've done a couple of them. Yeah. What's your experience with like a unitary system? That's what I'm gonna call that this because we've got the heat pump built onto the tank. Yeah, right? so we're a, kind of an, an all-in-one, if yeah. you might say. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so we have quite a few houses that are pretty rural and clients that don't want to deal with propane. So tankless isn't necessarily the right choice for them yep. sometimes. Yep. Uh, and we have clients that are looking for stuff that's pretty darn energy efficient. Like they're not going to settle for just an old electric tank water heater that still exists strong in the market in lots of places. This is kind of the next step. Like this is this is high efficiency. It is. It's, this one I think is right around a four COP. Might be slightly below that, but yeah. like that's that's about as high as it gets, yeah. right? And uh, so it's silent. an air to air yes. heat pump. Yes. So that means there's a byproduct here. Cold air and low. De it's going to be dehumidification, yeah. really, ultimately. And so in any climate, that's going to be uh, something you have to consider, depending on where you're installing this. I know in your market not always working with a basement, right? Yeah. And where I'm at, nearly, I, I just gonna say the majority of homes have basements on them, yeah. in them, and so we're also installing our water heaters in that basement. Yeah. That's the only place they're giving us the space to put mechanicals, right? So if we're in a, what was the terminology you used when it, we're talking about the volume of space we need to operate these, you said, if, if you don't have it in the space you're in, like if we're putting this in a smaller room. We need room, that connectivity. Connectivity, we need a well-connected space yeah. of volume to draw from. Look, I'll be the first one to say this, as a plumber, I know it's not uh, something that the manufacturers love me to say, but ducting these units to the outside and exhaust, you know, pulling outside air and exhausting that air to the outside, in a lot of cases is probably the best course of action on install. Well, if you think about it on the simplest of terms, 
if you're putting it to the outside, then it's not your concern. Right. Like you're not going to have to compensate it in any way. Uh, when we were talking about it before we started recording, we've installed them in garages and unfinished basements. I'm not putting this where it's going to affect living conditions that are coupled to where my clients are worried about comfort. You're right because we're going to we mess up compensate. We're going to we're going to change indoor air quality and comfort with lower humidity levels. We're going to be fighting that with other equipment. Not that that like this is great equipment. They, these are just things we do need to consider. Yeah. And you can plan for it very easily especially like in new construction like you're doing. They offer and some of the year that's a good thing. Yeah. Lower humidity and cold <laughs> air for part of the year is great in it my market. Great. Part of the year it's not. We just have to know that. Right, and it's very clear in the install manuals and the specs on these on what you have to do uh, as a small ducting kit. And depending on where this is installed, you might not even have to go very far with it. Yeah. I know it's capable, not that you're maybe concerned too much about it, but it's capable of going far distances. I think it's in the dozens or maybe multi dozens of feet. So like, look, it's yeah. not hard to put this pretty much anywhere as long as we're installing it right, uh, even if we have to duct it. Yeah, but saying all that, we're still using them because they're really high performers. They are. They're they're a great unit. They're they're giving us all of the things that we need, the performance and hot water. And in an all electric unit, that's pretty hard to come by in a lot of other devices. It is. Uh, they're more complicated than a, a regular electric tank water heater. There's no doubt about that. But what you can't see in this video, and I'll just co briefly cover it from this point on is heat pump, right? This is just basically a hollow shell covering the heat pump itself. Yeah. So tank. Tank, heat pump. Inside the tank, you've got a couple 4,500 watt elements where you're, you're familiar with that. That's how an electric water heater works. Um, we only fire one of those at a time. That's a technical way it works because otherwise it would take too much uh, amperage draw on the system. But now with this heat pump, roughly 500 watts, which is not a lot, we're uh, basically supercharging like what's in your refrigerator already right yeah and instead of pulling the heat out of the refrigerator we're pulling the heat from the space and putting it in the water yeah that's how it works yeah very simple uh but that byproduct that we've covered a lot already you know yeah. um these things they offer them in multiple sizes is another thing for performance purposes right and it's to compete against it's really to position this as an alternative to gas they've got the 50 a 65 and an 80, right? And so if you size these properly, and I, I caution people to oversize them, I think sometimes builders are like, well, I, a little bit bigger, I don't want to call back. Yeah. And while I respect that, you know, but we can size, size these properly and probably get away with a smaller tank than you think. Yeah, recovery is still pretty darn good. Like even though heat pump isn't as fast as say gas in most cases, the recovery is still perfectly fine. Right for, on par with an electric yeah. resistance water heater. Yeah. And they've got multiple operating modes with these things now where you've got vacation settings, you've got hybrid where they can use the electric element and the heat pump. So yeah, ultimately they've, smart. yeah, they're smart. And they've designed them to meet our customers' needs and demands. And as a builder, as a plumbing contractor, like we don't want those callbacks. Yeah. And so we can, there's, I've had experience installing them. I know they're gonna become mandated in a couple of years. That's another thing that you know, ultimately is, is happening in this industry. If we go over something like 30 gallons, somewhere there's a cutoff and it's pretty small to with electric resistance to where we have to go heat pump. Okay. So that's where we're at. Any other things you're thinking of when you're thinking of heat pumps? Uh, I think it's just, it's become like our starting point if we're talking just pure electric. Yeah. Like we just don't even have the conversation about electric resistance anymore. Yeah, no, yeah. it's, I think, I think that's pretty common. It's cool to hear you say that. I'm not dealing with the builder on a daily basis because I'm not doing the new construction anymore, but uh, kind of my goal in talking to you about this was just to get your feedback too and offer up anything I can offer up. Yeah. Yeah, tankless, heat pumps, I mean, we got, we got it covered, yeah. really, ultimately. Nobody's running on hot water. Yeah. Guys, I want to thank Jake for being on the show or on the on the video here. And uh, watch for more coverage from IBS here on our, our YouTube channel for Mechanical Hub. Jake, have a good one, man. Thanks for having me. Took a fight. <laughs>